Several years ago, when I was still in high school, my mom took me shopping for clothes at a local department store. I'd picked out quite a pile to try on, and my mom came in intermediately to hand me items over the dressing room door. I was in there for quite a while. Mom and I started giggling because we would occasionally hear our camera click, and thought that perhaps a lady in the dressing room beside me was taking photos of herself. Every few minutes while I was changing, we would hear the click and quietly giggle. I remember that I was changing into a dress when I saw a camera pass barely into my stall from the space underneath the wall from the neighboring changing room. And then it dawned on me. There was someone taking photos of me while I was changing the whole time. My mom must have seen it too because she banged on the neighboring door. A man's voice said, what? Of course, my mom screamed at him. She ended up chasing him out of the store, yelling for security, and shouting that the man was taking photos in the dressing room. He ended up leaving before anyone came. We made a police report, but the guy who got away with his camera and all the photos. On the video surveillance, he seemed to be a young, balding guy, and he left his hoodie in the room. I felt so creepy and so violated and my poor mom felt awful. We were notified a couple months later that the case was dropped, and we never learned who the person was. So creepy dressing room dude, let's not meet. So before I begin, I am currently 18 years old, and I live in rural central Illinois. This experience happened when I was about seven years old, back in 2005. I remember the month being July because me and my twin sister were outside catching fireflies, something I'm sure everyone has done once. It was about 7 p.m. and the sun wouldn't be down for another couple hours. Let me explain the layout of my house. We live in the country. When I say that, I'm talking at least 10 miles to the next town. Cornfields surround our house and we were the only house for a few miles. Me and my twin sister were in the front yard catching fireflies when we see in the distance a white van coming up the dirt road. By white van, I'm talking about the stereotypical pedophile van. We don't think anything of it until he stops right in front of the house. The windows are tinted so we can't see in. He is sitting there for it feels like hours was only 10 minutes realistically, but that is strange. We are in the middle of nowhere. Why would he sit in front of our house? That's when he rolls down his window. To this day, I have no idea why, but the creep pulled out one of those cheap cameras you can buy at Walgreens and started taking pictures. Me and my sister milked out and went inside to tell our parents. My dad went outside to confront the creep. Me, my mom, and my sister were watching from the living room window. As soon as the creep noticed my dad coming towards the van, the man drove off. Obviously, whatever he was doing at my house was not anything good. We called 911 and filed a report, but nothing ever came to it. It weirds me out to think about to this day. Creep in the pedal van taking pictures of me and my sister? Let's not meet. A few years ago, my ex-husband and I were eating at the mall with my two-year-old daughter. She was happily munching on a cookie and watching Yo Gabba Gabba on my phone. This old Japanese man, probably 70, walked up to us and started commenting on how pretty she is. She has curly strawberry blonde hair and sea green eyes with super pale skin and how she looks so healthy. I say thank you. Old people always love adorable kids so I don't freak out immediately. He then proceeds to stroke her cheek and run his hands through her hair and talks about how we should bring her to his office because he is a pediatrician and he loved to treat her. I pick her up from the high chair and hold her in my lap so he won't touch her again. My ex-husband tries to politely give cues for him to go the fuck away, but he doesn't take the hint. Then, while I'm holding her, he bends over and runs his hand over her leg and gives her a creepy smile and says, It's okay, 
I'm a pediatrician. I shoot back glaring as I say, Don't touch my fucking kid! And stand up and start putting her in, in her stroller. We leave and he follows us out to the car, asking to play with my daughter. A few weeks pass and I go back to the same mall and end up bumping into him again. This time my ex-husband was at work. So I'm in Sephora picking up some makeup and I have my back turned for a minute and I hear, Mommy? And turn around to see the fucker holding my daughter. I get her back from him and loudly say, Get the fuck away from my child! And go to the mall security to tell them they couldn't find him. After that, we never went back to the mall. So creepy old fuck, let's not meet. This happened about a month ago. It was a Saturday, and Saturday mornings always have the same routine. I'd get up, my father would be either about to leave for work, or already gone. My mother would cook me breakfast, then go upstairs to shower. So as she is showering, I'm downstairs by myself on my phone. After a few minutes of browsing websites, I glance up for whatever reason, and see someone in the far end of my backyard. Our yard is about 30 to 40 feet. This actually happens a lot in my neighborhood, with people going in and out of our yard, so I don't really think much of it, and went back down to look at my phone. However, I realized that I wasn't moving. He was just standing there in my backyard. If that wasn't bad enough, he was looking into our house. I watch him to see what he's doing. You know, maybe he just thinks our house is nice, but that was far from the case. As I'm staring at him, and he sees me staring at him, he begins to walk for our door. At first, he was slowly walking, but then he picked up his pace a bit. At this point, all sorts of alarms in my head are going off and I decided this creep didn't have the best intentions. Getting to action, I quickly call my Sheltie into the room, and as soon as he comes in, he spots the man and begins to bark his head off. I quickly go to my door, making it look like I'm ready to let my dog after him. I guess the guy realized what I had in mind and took off running. My mother came down about 10 minutes later, but I didn't want to freak her out, so I kept the story to myself. This man still hasn't come back yet, and I'm hoping it stays that way. So creepy dude standing in my backyard, staring into my house? Let's not meet. I did my first year of college in a mid-sized city in the Midwest, in a state I wasn't originally from. This particular city has a shitty bus system so I got used to walking while I was there. One day, I was walking to volunteer at the local children's theater, and I passed by a sketchy motel. There were three or four cars in the parking lot, and I managed to accidentally make eye contact with a dude in an old beat-up white sedan. I didn't get a good look at him, but I would say he was late 20s, early 30s, and was wearing a black hoodie. He was sitting there with another passenger, and when, we, and when we locked eyes, he was giving me a hateful glare. I instantly felt something was off. However, I glanced back down at the ground and kept walking, but at a slightly faster pace. As I passed the motel, I turned back to make sure I was fine. As I glanced back at the car, I saw him getting out of it, and when we made eye contact again, he started running straight for me. At this, I broke out into a sprint, trying to find a store to duck into. I hear him getting closer to me after about a block, and thankfully there was a subway on the other side of the street. I knew he was close, so I just started screaming really loud and ran across the street, straight into the subway. I stopped screaming as I pushed the door open. Once inside, I looked out the window and saw he was gone. I sat down and almost started crying. I was so scared. The guy at the front counter immediately came over and asked if I was okay and called the police for me. The cops ended up driving me back to campus and I skipped volunteering that day. Creepy guy who chased me, let's never meet again.
Let me start off by saying that this just happened. My husband and I, being the nerds we are, decided to go on a walk to go Pokemon hunting, since the weather is wonderful. We took our nine month old in her stroller we got her, and headed out, walking the block, then down the road connecting to ours. My husband suggested we walk down into this new subdivision that has no houses within it yet, since there might be different Pokemon down this way. So here we go, and it just seems to get darker. Our daughter fell asleep in her stroller, and my husband and myself were just laughing and chatting. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds like bare feet running lightly behind us. What the hell? I semi-yelled. I turned to see a figure sprinting about 25 feet away. It was a man. He ran past with a smile that I could see his teeth in the dark, and he said, so Norman Bates like, Hello there. I didn't reply. I simply watched him disappear into the darkness. I assumed it'd be a little side road. It was not. About three blocks away from where the man was, my husband said, You know, that wasn't a road. It was a dumpster. In the woods behind it, with a little fence. Where did he go? And he laughed. My husband has a bit of a warped sense of humor. So, he shrugged it off and later picked on me because I kept looking back, expecting to see that creepy smile. Needless to say, we noped the fuck out of there and went home. My husband said jokingly, Ooh, he knows where you live now, baby. He's gonna find you. And to that, I say, creepy running man, let's not meet again.